I yield back. Does a gentle lady um, yield back from getting in between this discussion? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director Sams, I'd like to follow up on Chairman Westerman's line of questioning. The press release on the Presidio's Trust website announcing the $200 million IRA payout clearly states multiple times that Nancy Pelosi secured this earmark for the Presidio, despite the fact that the language in the IRA does not explicitly state that this funding should be used for Presidio. In fact, it only says that funding shall be used for deferred maintenance within the National Park Service. This is different from language the House Natural Resources Committee marked up last Congress, which not so coincidentally earmarked the exact same amount of funding explicitly for the Presidio Trust. Did you or anybody in the administration have conversations with former Speaker Pelosi's office about modifying the language in the Democrats' final reconciliation bill to disguise from the American public the fact that $200 million for deferred maintenance would actually be used for the Presidio? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have not had any discussions with uh, former Speaker Pelosi's staff, and I can't speak for anybody else. So you said earlier in your testimony, you said it was congressional intent. That's my understanding as it was came down to me that it was congressional intent. So how did you know that if it, um, if you didn't have any conversations or communication with Speaker Pelosi's office? Because the direction came through the department. Came from the Department of? Interior to Interior. Me. Who in Interior? Uh, the Assistant Secretary. The Assistant Secretary directed you to send that $200 million to the Presidio. That's correct, sir. Thank you. Director Sams, the elephant in the room is that after spending $4 billion over the past three years to reduce the deferred maintenance backlog, it has somehow increased by almost $10 billion. How does the National Park Service explain this increase? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, th this increase is based on how we just finally were able to use better methodology in assessing the maintenance needs at some of our parks and being able to use that. You know, the process of, of changing our DM and our methodology has been in development for years prior to the passage of the Great American Outdoors Act. The new process is both simpler and more comprehensive and gives us a much better picture of the conditions and the assets in our portfolio. We are finally using an interesting standard that does give us the more full picture. And because of that, when we look at it, for years, many of our national parks and our superintendents have been placing Band-Aids on a number of these infrastructure and deferred maintenance. When GOA money came out, it actually provides us to actually do surgery. And of course, as you know, surgery is very expensive. And so when we started looking at really what we'd had in those assets since the last major investments in the national parks, which were in 1966, at the end of Mission 66, we recognize that yes, we have a much larger portfolio and um, because we were able to better look at and calculate it, that number did grow. Are we turning these into Taj Mahals? Is that what, we're, is that what you're saying? Absolutely not, sir. You know, most of these are to make sure they're up to not only code, but that they're resilient so that they can last another two or three generations. And therefore we also have to build out a better post-maintenance plan to keep upkeep these facilities. The agency attributes the $10 billion increase in the backlog in large part to methodology changes fiscal year 2022, is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, however, you can see in the chart, the largest increase in the backlog happened the year prior in fiscal year 2021. Between FY 2021 and 2022, the years in which the methodology supposedly switched over, the backlog only increased $500 million. Can you explain that discrepancy? You know, I'm gonna ask for a little help from Brian. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> the increase that you are referring to. I'm sir, can, if you don't mind, Director Sams, I'm gonna take this offline because I only have a limited amount of yes, time sir. to question. And, um, but we're going to get this information um, uh, shortly. Uh, when GAOA passed in 2020, the National Park Service maintenance backlog was roughly 12.7 billion. Uh, Funding is set to expire September 2025. By that time, NPS will have received $6.5 billion to reduce this maintenance backlog. At this point, is NPS projecting that the backlog will be higher or lower once GAOA expires compared to when it passed? We anticipate that it will be lower. As we're starting to see the fruition of the projects that came out and were funded in fiscal year 21, 
we expect that these investments will start to show lowered deferred maintenance over time. Um, and we'll have to continue to figure out how to build out and ensure that we are getting back to that backlog uh, once JO is uh, closed out. Lower than 12.7 billion? I, wouldn't, I would have to go back and do some calculations and get that number back to you. I'm gonna ask one other quick question here. Um, to what extent are NEPA reviews a challenge when completing these deferred maintenance projects? I wouldn't say they're a major challenge. You know, we, um, NEPA is an important part of our planning process. Um, you know, the bigger expenses, of course, are in the actual engineering costs that we have to do in order to make sure these projects are sound. Thank you. Um, in closing, I would just say, I hope that your um, agency is not becoming the Nancy Pelosi service rather than the National Park Service. With that,